In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step on the process of making your own font and font forge. Let's hop into today's video. Continuing on the font that I was working on in my last video, now we're going to focus on lowercase. So I'm just going to sort of tweak these letters a bit so that they feel a bit more even and fit better inside of these squares. So I went through all of these lowercase letters and tweaked them so that they have the same width about um, and the same I tried to get them around the same height, but I think this will do. I can tweak everything in FontForge. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the canvas so that I get each individual letter as its own picture when I export it. So we can start with, let's say, this letter A. That looks good, so I'll leave it like that. So now we have this lowercase letter A, so I'll go to export that. So now I have to do the same for the rest of these letters here. Okay, so now we can move on to Font Forge. I have all of my capital letters here already. So now we're going to start working on the lowercase letters. And as you can see, each box here um, represents its own character. But right now, I'm going to just double click on this box right under this lowercase a. That opens this smaller window where we'll start drawing our letter. So I'm going to go to File import and find my lowercase a in here and I'm just gonna leave everything on the default and hit OK. I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna import all of my reference photos first so then I can just dive in to font forge and start actually forming them. Something I want to point out is that because these um, photos aren't really the same size as my other ones. I do have to sort of resize them in here. So I currently have this pointer tool selected. So if I just click and drag, I can actually extend my photo. All right, so now I have all of my photos imported and you can scroll through them and have them all open right here if that makes it a little easier. I found that that helps me if you want to zoom in, if you have if you have a mouse, you can hold down your control or command key and just use the middle mouse scroller. There's also a magnify tool here. So if I click, it zooms me in. And if I hold down my alt or option key and click, it zooms out. I can scroll up and down. Um, you can also use these little sidebars here to move the shape around too. We're going to use this uh, pen tool right here. And again, like I mentioned in my last video about Font Forge, to get this shape here, we need to draw in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to start from down here and I'm going to just click. That's my first point right here. And then I'm going to, let's say I want to make a second point right here. So I'm going to click and hold down. I didn't let go yet. And I'm just going to stretch this out. So I'm just moving my mouse around while still holding down. And that's what's going to help you get these nice curves here. So if I make a second one, say up here, click and drag. Nice curve. And just kind of following that. Okay, so right now my shape's a little ugly. If you hold on your space bar, you can preview it. So that's what the shape actually looks like right now. But no worries, we can tweak it. So going back to this pointer tool up here. 
So these are your handles. You can actually push them in or out to sort of alter the curve. So I might push this one in more. You can also use these little like purple circles here to sort of alter that too. Sometimes you might have more than one point selected without realizing it. I can undo with controller command Z. And I'm just gonna like click off of, you know, this, uh, these points here to just like drag select on empty space. Just to make sure that I don't have any of those selected. So that now I can go in and make those changes that I actually want to make. All right, so I have that space now. So now I need to get that hole in the middle. So this time with my pen tool here, I'm gonna go in a counterclockwise direction. So now as you can see, I have that hole in the middle. So that's why it is important to think of your shapes as positive and negative space. So if we wanna kinda test this A out alongside the letters that we already have, we can go to metrics up here and I'm going to click on new metrics window so I can type in like Apple and all uppercase letters and it'll come up because I already have those. But let's say I want to type it with a lowercase. Hmm. Hold on. For some reason, it's not coming up. Okay, so I was working on more letters without realizing that it wasn't recording. Brilliant. But uh, with, the, with the letter A, the problem was that I had the... I drew it on this background layer here with the picture. So your picture will get imported to the background layer. But you have to make sure that you're actually drawing your shape on the foreground layer or else you won't be able to see it. So... I literally just drag selected it all and then cut and paste it on the foreground layer. So that could be an easy fix. And as you can see, I went ahead and added the letter B, C, and now I'm on D. So I will continue with that. And as you can see, that's how they kind of look side by side. So definitely when you get at least maybe two or three letters, type them in the metrics window up here to see how they look next to each other. Also, you can affect the kerning or how much space is between your letters with this line that's on the side here. Okay, and now that I'm onto the letter G, I think it's a good time to talk about, you know, this little piece here, the descender. So I was experimenting with it and it used to be this line. You can't just like drag it. You have to actually um, change the descender in some settings here. So if I go back to my main window and I'll go to element font info, so we have to uncheck the scale outlines and I'm, I was at 200 before. Um, let's try 600. I'm going to hit OK. And you see how the letters changed now. So now we can preview this. And you see the line moved and you can tell here. Um, so I'm going to just keep adjusting it and see what feels right. Okay, so I think I finally figured out how I want the G to look. And as you can see, now that I changed the descender like mark here, now we can see the whole like tail part of this letter G, which is really cool. So we'll keep on going. So as you can see, I completed all of my lowercase letters and I even added a few special characters in here. 
there were a few things that I did want to point out. So you can edit the points. I have my pointer tool selected. What I can do, I can select the point and you can't just hit your delete key if you want to delete it because then as you can see now, there is a missing gap here and that's why now we can no longer see the preview of our letter Z there. So let me undo that with controller command Z. Let's say I want this point to disappear and be merged with the rest of my line. I can right click it and I'll select merge. And now we see that that extra point is no longer there. I can always add it back if I use this pen tool and I can just click along the line and we can see that now I have a point right there. But as of right now, it's not a curve point with the handles. So I can right click it and select curve. And now I have the handlebars that will allow me to make a very nice curve if I want to. Another thing I wanted to address that was also requested was how to specify the kerning between two specific characters. So for example, I'm going to go to metrics, new metrics window. And if I type in juju, we see that the spacing between the first J and the first U is pretty nice, but then between this U and the second J, there's a little too much space between these two letters. So if we go to element font info and make sure you're in the lookups tab, and then also make sure that you're in the GPOS tab here. Next, we're going to click add lookup. And for type, I'm going to select hair position kerning. And I'm going to click on this little arrow here and select kern horizontal kerning. And then I'm going to click OK. And then now that we have this, I'm going to add a subtable to it. Click OK. And in this first box here, I'm going to select one of my letters. So in this case, the first letter for my kerning pair will be the letter lowercase u. And my second letter in my pairing is a lowercase j. I'm going to hit OK. We can see that when I tap up here, we get a little preview of these two letters. And we have auto kern checked right now. So this is what auto kern leaves us at. Um, you can always uncheck it. And let's say you want to do it manually. I can just click and drag the second letter around to put it wherever I like. Let's say I want it there. And I'll hit OK. And I'll hit OK again. So now when I go to metrics, new metrics window, and I type in juju, we see that we get the new spacing that we made for our hair. Last thing we'll go over is exporting your font. So if we go back to element font info and in PS names, we can see that we can name our font and input to lots of other useful information for your font file. But once you have that, you can go to file and then generate fonts. And you can save your font as an open type file or a true type file, whatever works best for you. And in this case, I already have it saved. So all I have to do, I can click on generate. Let me know if you guys have any other software that you'd like me to check out. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. Have a totally awesome day. And I'll see you next time.